hello. Hi, hi. So uh, this video is going to be a little bit more of a serious one. I'm going to discuss self-harm, so obviously <laughs> trigger warning. Um, and I'll say immediately, I am okay. I am not suicidal. I don't really feel like self-harming. It's just something that has been on my mind and something that I don't get to talk about <laughs> a lot with people. Anybody, anybody out there of you that has this experience that would be willing to share. I know some people get tattoos to cover up their scars. They don't have to see them anymore. So people don't ask them questions anymore. I totally get that. But for me, I don't want my scars to go away. I don't want to cover up my scars. And in kind of a weird, sick way, I'm kind of proud of my scars because it's, it's visual, it's visual proof that I've made it <laughs> this far that the scared, sad, depressed, hurt person that, that did that is, is no longer me. So, so with that, you would think that I would want to cover it up, but no, it's a reminder that I, I survived. I sur I survived through that shit. I survived. I'm still here. So I should be proud of it, you know, and it's, and, and frankly, also, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I kind of want to be able to go back there again if I need to. And having a tattoo on an arm would be would be horrible because, <laughs> because I don't want to be self-harming and a tattoo be like staring me in the face like as I'm, you know, <laughs> that would be horrible. So you would think it would be, oh, well, even better, it would be a deterrent from self-harming. But that's not a kind of deterrent that I want. That's not a healthy deterrent. That's, that's, that's a forced n negative deterrent, you know. I don't know if that's making any sense at all. So, yeah, I don't want, I don't want my scars to fade. I don't want to cover them up. I'm kind of proud of them. Not like, not like I show them off. Like I'm not showing them to you right now. The, the uh, paw is is covering them up. And I've been thinking lately. Again, not that I'm suicidal or anything like that. It's just I've been doing DBT and I'm in therapy, and sometimes I get tired of fighting. I get tired of trying to do the right thing, of trying to be healthy, to make healthy choices, to use healthy coping skills, to to be effective instead of ineffective, to be mindful. <laughs> I get tired of that. I, it gets annoying. I get tired, and sometimes you know you just want that quick fix that you know without a shadow of a doubt, will fucking work. I know for a fact, without a shadow of a doubt, that self-harm would make me feel better. No question about it. It's, it's a tried and true method. <laughs> it, it would be fast. You know, I can't say painless, obviously, but the pain doesn't last for very long at all. Quick, easy, you know, get myself cleaned up afterwards and bada bing, bada boom, I can move on. <sighs> but yes, I know there's further ramifications because, <sighs> you know, if I don't get, take care of myself, I could get infected. That happened with more recent self-harming. That was horrible. That was ridiculous. That That's an example of when it can go wrong. <sighs> What do you do instead of self-harming? What 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 are your coping skills? What because it just it gets to be too much sometimes. Just the constant struggle, the constant fighting, the constant inner turmoil, 
just it gets to be too much I don't self-harm because I hate myself or that I'm depressed it's because emotions and everything build up to the point where I cannot take it anymore the dam is bursting the volcano is about to erupt <laughs> whatever metaphor you want to use um, I probably I feel like I've already said this before um, but maybe that's just because I say it an awful lot in general but the metaphor that I use I think is the best is think of a tea kettle you know on the stove the kind that you put on the stove and so the water is boiling in it and it's whistling you can turn off the um, burner you know on the stove you can turn it all the way off and eventually the tea kettle will stop whistling because there's no more heat source and eventually the water will cool down again and it'll stop whistling eventually or you can pick up that tea kettle and move it to another burner that isn't on or move it and use it in your water whatever in other words <laughs> remove it completely off of the hot burner and that tea kettle will stop whistling immediately as soon as you pick it up i'm tired of waiting for the tea kettle to stop whistling i'm tired of waiting for the water to cool down that's what all of this dbt all these coping skills are they're they take too long <laughs> and i know practice makes perfect blah i get tired of hearing that too baby steps freaking hell the next person that says you know oh you just you know take it in stride baby steps one day at a time pow <laughs> I just, just want to smack them it gets tiring <sighs> yeah breathing breathing like that is a coping skill and feels fine for like that little you know microsecond that you expel your frustration in a breath being in here helps there are some people that I have met or one person in particular um, who I I kind of agree with her philosophy on self-harming is when you're like down that deep in it you know if your choice is like self-harming or being suicidal obviously the better choice is self-harming well obviously the best choice is to get help talk to someone go to crisis you know whatever obviously but if you're not capable of that if your brain is not gonna let you do that you know the choice between killing yourself or self-harming and self-harm but at least make sure you're safe with it you know make sure that whatever thing you use is clean and sterilized and make sure you know when to stop so you don't cause any life-threatening damages you know uh, make sure you have all of your equipment handy to take care of yourself you know bandages and and whatnot antibiotic stuff have it handy have it right there with you so you don't have to go and try and find it you know and keep it clean keep it bandaged change your bandage you know be be smart about it <laughs> some people would say that self-harming is stupid in itself people who haven't self-harmed just they don't get it and it's, <laughs> it's really hard to, do, to explain it um yeah so if you are going to do that then at least be safe with it that was the problem that I had with my more recent one was I was not safe with it I did not take care of it like I should have and 
I got infected and I had to involve people that I didn't want to involve and uh, yeah so that that's that's another reason of like if you don't want anybody to see like you don't want to bother anybody with it well then you better be hygienic about it and take care of it because you know if, if somebody else has to take care of you then it's going to be an added layer of guilt you don't want that so i kind of agree with her that if if the lesser of two evils you know with it in mind that when you are at a better place when you are stable not necessarily like happier but at least stable then call somebody call a friend call your doctor go to a crisis unit something you know do do something once you're once you're stable you know yeah Me mental health triage <laughs> i did it a lot when i was going to school college i was under a lot of pressure um going to school obviously i was living by myself for the first time um i had a dog for the first time in my life i was doing taekwondo trying to get my black belt so there was a lot of there was a lot of pressure on me and i was newly diagnosed and i was taking meds for the first time so there was all this newness all this stress piling in on me <laughs> a lot at once so i did end up unfortunately doing it a lot because it was the only way to release that pressure <laughs> to release some of that to feel like i could have control again that's I, I have yet to find any kind of coping skill that has that same feeling that reaches that same mind body connection feeling of all these em emotions and stress and everything building up and having a doing something physical that oh, lets it go and yes I know you can do exercise you can do really you know run really hard really fast whatever with lift weights that are really intense I know and you can do that sometimes that has worked for me sometimes it hasn't because it'll make me just more depressed and anxious because I'll be like oh my god I am breathing hard after running for like a minute I suck I'm out of shape <laughs> so the exercise thing doesn't work for me because I get in my head about it. That's why distraction is really the only thing that works. That's why when I was going through all this, I was obsessively watching the Saw movies. <laughs> the only other thing that I found that was the closest that wasn't harmful well, I mean, it could technically be <laughs> horrible depending on how long you stay in the water. Was jumping into freezing cold shower with all my clothes on, just getting in there. And that, you know, shock pain of the ice cold water had sort of the same switching effect, discharging effect, you know. Ha. But. It is painful in a different way. It's it's uncomfortable. It's it's pain in my entire body, which is kind of too much, versus localized controlled pain. I don't like, <laughs> and I don't like temper radical temperature changes. Um, like I take forever to get into a pool. I have to go in really slowly. <laughs> I don't really like water balloon fights or water gun fights because of the cold water hitting me. I just rapid rapid changes in temperature are actually like painful and uncomfortable to me. 
So the shower thing, sure, yeah, might definitely will be a shock, but um, it's it's not a it's not a pain that I want to experience. It's it's not as controlled. Well, it's more it's more torturous. <laughs> okay, I'll say bye for now. Bye. Bye.